So the next question we had was not looking for advice for playwrights, but asking for advice for, and we've touched on this to a certain extent, I think, but advice for computer <coughs> programmers, veterinarians, anybody. And how can they think like a playwright if they're trying to solve a problem? Why do they want to think like a playwright? I don't understand. I don't understand the question. It doesn't always work for us. Yeah, <laughs> why do they want to think like a playwright? No, but some of your, your the, the things you've talked about so far, of, uh, it's okay, for instance, for the first draft, mm -hmm. not to be good. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's actually some of what you're just saying, actually, where it can be applied to anybody. You know, um, just think about what it is you want to achieve and don't necessarily uh, try to give what you think people want from you. I think that's a really important, that's an important life lesson, Brad. Well done. <laughs> you know, listen to Brad. Well, I have another one for, for actually for this question. Mm -hmm. If everyone wanted to be more like a playwright, if they wanted to, to do what we do and apply it to their life, I think the one thing, whether we're conscious of it or not, that we all do with a talent that other people don't have is listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be a playwright, you have to listen, and you don't just listen with your ears, you listen with your eyes because you realize what's coming out of the mouth and what's actually happening can be very different things. And as a playwright, my main challenge, I think all of our main challenges, is how do you use language to create character, to advance plot, to tell the story, to give the exposition without making it sound like all of those things. And the only way that I know of to do it is to actually listen to how people speak, not how we think they speak, not how we want them to speak, but how do they actually speak? What are they really saying? Because quite often what people are saying and what they want are very different things. And if you're a good playwright, you can do that, that a great deal. But the, the ability to listen in any facet of life is always an advantage. The, the ability to understand what people are really saying as opposed to what they think they're saying, which is what playwriting is all about, is something that, that I've applied in any job, any other thing that I've done, and it's always been to my advantage. So, you know, my simple answer to that is really listen. And I don't think anybody's going to go wrong by listening more intensely to what people are saying to them. And another bit of advice um, um, that I would say is, and one of the things I've learned is, especially over the past few years, um, when, you're, when you're showing your play, like, or let's say you have a play that you've, you've, you're creating, but it's not necessarily a text-based play, it could be a movement play, but it's just hard to communicate to an artistic director or somebody who like hires playwrights or whatever. There are times when you actually have to show people what your idea is. There are times when the medium in which you're trying to communicate your idea is not full enough or rich enough for people to comprehend it. It's not that it's a, not a good idea, but people will reject it because of the medium that you're presenting it to with. And, I, and I, I'm saying this in my experience with um, if you're creating theater that's not text-based, or it's not based on dialogue, but it's based on like movement or something just different that people haven't seen before, there are times when you, if you're trying to do something different or sort of different from what you usually do, sometimes you have to show people, and you have to really, and you, and you also have to not be bitter about it, and you can't get frustrated or get your back up that people don't understand your genius. You have to realize that really intelligent people can sometimes miss a great idea because it just hasn't been presented to them in a way that they can comprehend. And that's, you know, that's happened with some great plays, great art throughout history, you know, something a playwright is getting, like a blind, they could be given Drawer Boy and they could just read it, look at it and go, I don't get what makes this play interesting. But then it's done, and then the artistic director goes, oh, well, that's the play, okay, now we'll do it. You know, that happens a lot to us. That requires knowing how to read a play. Yeah. You're knowing how to really read a play, and then you laugh at that, but there are a great many people, and no many of them run the theater, who have no idea how to read a play. And the idea that the play on the page should not be good. Mm -hmm. A play that is too well written on the page, for me, is probably not going to play very well, because I, I don't believe plays are literary constructs. I believe they're really just templates for something we build in three dimensions on this stage and then share with an audience. What we have on the page is really just the beginning. And I write a lot, you know, again, when The Human Remains was first written, everyone was going, oh my God, this is so dark, it's so bleak, no one will come, everybody will hate this. And I could say, no, it's funny, right. it's it really is so funny. funny. And they were like, there's no humor in this. And then we did it, well, we finally read it publicly, and, and the people literally, it was like a revelation, like, wow, this is really very funny and scary and heartbreaking or whatever, but they couldn't see it at all until it was actually read, which is the way a play should work. 
you shouldn't really understand a play until you hear it. And you shouldn't completely understand it until you see it. If you understand it too well when you read it, maybe it's not a play. Maybe it's a novel with no description. Mm -hmm. um, just back to the question a little bit. Uh, something that I, I think about, especially for emerging artists, applies to writers and actors, is that you see a lot of emerging artists kind of um, pounding on doors that they think they should be knocking on. So they'll be knocking on the door of, you know, of a large perhaps Shakespeare theater company or something, and, and, and be really like disappointed and frustrated and, and absolutely disillusioned because they're not because they're not getting through that door. And I and I always want to ask them, why? Do you really want that door? Turn around. There's tons of other doors that are wide open, that are waiting for you, that are looking for you. And and to, to place all that on a on a few things. And I, I, I I think that's a philosophy that I've always taken, just as a writer in particular. And I, I look for the doors that are open, and, and in fact, they're you know if you look for them, they tend to be there, uh, and and not blunting my knuckles on a door that's you know not going to open anyway. Not going to open anyway. Yeah. yeah. There was a line in one of my in a random novel I wrote that said, "There's no such things as dead ends; only people who find dead ends." Yeah. Oh, deep. That's um, very good. I like that. <laughs> It's copyrighted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there goes my t-shirt idea. <laughs> uh, for me, because I come from a storytelling culture, um, and for me, it's all in the story, and one of the things that is, when I'm working on whatever it is, it's following the line of logic from the first page to the last page. Stories, in most forms, need to follow a coherent logical storyline, A leads to B leads to C. You can play around with it in all number of different ways, this whole postmodern thing. But for me, when I sit down and write, I have to make sure I know the logic of my story, how the how the characters add or detract from the from the logic, what I'm trying to say, how I'm trying to say it, and why I'm trying to say it. And I try and always break it down so that I know coherently what I'm trying to say and why I'm trying to say it. And I think logic works in almost any profession. Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily in the end have to be in the order you saw it in. You can switch that around. Things, but as a writer, I always feel you have to know the narrative from beginning to end. And then you can mess it up however much you want to. It doesn't have to be linear. It doesn't, you, know, you can do all kinds of things. But the writer has to know the story. And the other thing I, I, is kind of goes back to what we were talking about with writer's block. I think in life, it doesn't matter what you are, whether you're a player or whatever, sometimes you don't get what you want by grasping. Sometimes you get what you want by keeping your hand open. So sometimes, like you go for a walk. If you're, if you know, you haven't figured out what the thing is that you really want to write, you go for a walk and you wait. And that to me is like keeping your hand open, and just because you know, the more experience you get as a writer, you know that something's going to fall into your hand. You don't know what, but if you go like this, it can't actually fall into your hand. So you actually have to. And that's just, that's just my idea. Remain open. Remain open. <laughs> Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. I I now realize, in probably the last five years or so, that I, I um, the last scenes of my play are almost the first things that I write, and I, I and, and the first image really that I have, and and I and I have to work to it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't know anything, but I know how it ends. I know what happens to that person. I know the final image, and and it's messy sometimes how I get there. But then at least I have something I'm working towards, and. And that's really useful for for me, and it's how my brain works. But it helps me it helps me have some focus because I think we're trying to get there. Mm -hmm. We're trying we're trying to get there. We're trying to get so we earn this image. I hear about these writers who don't structure and they just start writing and they don't. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That yeah. Yeah, I know. I'd be like, oh, I'd be like, I don't know. How's this going to end? What? Yeah. Well, look, I know a friend of mine who's a, play, a playwright who just says, you know, I have no idea where my fingers are going to take me today. I'm mm -hmm. just going to sit down and see what happens. Stirs a crap up. It sends a shit chill down my spine. Right? I think it's a combination. I, mean, I, I personally feel it's kind of dangerous to, be, to, to not allow your unconscious freedom when you're writing because I find a lot of the stuff I find when I'm writing, I had no idea yeah. was going to be there, whether it's character moments, actions, whatever it is. And, and when I write, I, I tend to have kind of landmarks. Like, I know this image and this conflict has to happen. I know this image and this conflict. And then I got an idea for the end for basically what it is. And, and it's actually the, the journey to those landmarks is where I find most of the writing. Quite often, in the end, those landmarks are removed. 
And it's the journey that got me to each one that actually ends up making up the plan. For me, it's I when I sit down to write, I the final product ends up being about sixty percent of what I planned and forty percent of new stuff that came out of no. the gods. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, I think it's magic. I love that moment when you have this thing. You kind of know what the character's going to do, and you get to that moment, and then you're writing, and that character goes, "No, I'm not walking through the door." And you go, "Oh." oh, oh. And that's when you know you're on yeah. the right track yeah. because your character yeah. has, has become independent of you yeah. and has started to live and started to create their own and demand their own story. I, I mm -hmm. mean, almost every play I, I worked on, I reach a point where that starts to happen. And if that doesn't start to happen, that's usually an abandoned project. Yeah. yeah.